day. Today we're going to be looking at lofting and again this requires a fair amount of work with the uh, work surfaces here within Fusion 360. And so today what we're going to do is create a miniature canoe and this would actually fit a uh, little uh, you know, little green army men or some little token items uh, in this design. So it's not going to be a full-size canoe, it's a mini canoe, but we're going to create a loft of that particular object. And again, the idea is to learn how to use the construction work surfaces and the process of lofting. So initially we're going to create a sketch and we're going to work on the XY plane, keeping Z uh, in and out. And with, the, with this particular sketch, what we're going to do is we are going to create um, an arc and some straight lines, or a straight line and some arcs. So I'm going to go ahead and create a straight line here. It's about an inch long. And we're going to create an arc. And that arc is going to be a three-point arc. And so it'll be pick point. And I'll pick an end point here at about an inch and a half. And about an inch and a half, inch and a half. Yep. And we'll kind of drag this out to make a canoe bottom. And we'll choose OK. So now we've got the arc here. What we'll do is we'll mirror the arc. But before I can mirror it, what I'm going to do is I'll draw on a construction line vertically in the Y axis. So I'll draw the line, right mouse click on it and change it to a construction line. Now I've got a construction line that I can mirror this particular arc to the other side. So using the mirror tool, we'll select the object first, which is the arc, and then we'll come over here, pick the mirror line selection button, pick the mirror line, and everything should connect up well. So now we've got our basic shape, but as you know, a canoe isn't just one line thick, it's actually got a thickness to it. So we're going to go ahead and offset. And we're going to offset these lines, except we're not going to positive Z, we're going to have to go negative Z, and we're going to make it a sixteenth of an inch. So it's going to be negative .625 on the inside. And we'll choose OK. So we can do a couple of things at this point. We can just cap the ends here at, on the canoe. We can make a little um, rail surface, which is typical for a canoe. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do uh, at this point. The easiest thing that we can do is create a rectangle here from this top corner. Um, we're going to go ahead and just draw that in. We'll dimension this thickness at a sixteenth of an inch. We'll dimension it from the outside edge to the face. So let's zoom in here, face to the outside edge, 0.25. Perfect. And what we'll do is we'll then mirror this again as we create the other side. So we're going to go ahead and mirror uh, the top line, the outside line, the bottom line mirror line is here and it should perfectly line up and we choose OK. Now we have to go in and trim each side. So using the trim tool I'll trim this line, this line, and this line. And so that kind of creates a shape that we can use. Come back over, zoom in here, trim this line and this line. And that again creates that same shape. Okay, we'll finish the sketch, and now we've got our first sketch of our canoe. Now, we're going to do the next sketch of the canoe, and that's going to be, and as I said, this is a mini canoe, so it's only going to be about three inches, three to four inches uh, in front of it. So to do that, I'm going to need to take the construction uh, plane and offset it. So I'm going to offset this XY plane. And I can just grab the arrow and move it. And we're going to do it three inches. So we're going to offset it three inches. 
Now we've got a work surface out here that we can use to draw another shape. So we'll put a sketch on that work surface. Look at the front view, because the front view helps us match up exactly what we're going to do. So what we're going to do now is we can create a circle and we're going to need to draw the circle. Let's see here. If we do that, we can do a two-point circle. And a two-point circle allows me to pick the bottom and drag up to the top for the circle. And so what I'm going to do is drag up to the maximum height of our object shape. And so what that's going to do is that's going to change the, the way that the circle looks. And then what we'll do is we'll offset the circle. And this time it's going to be a negative 0 0.0625. So again, it's a sixteenth of an inch thick. And we'll choose OK. Now what's the difference here? Well, the difference is, is on the circle, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line. So we know that this line comes across and the bottom of it is the same thickness. So we could literally just draw a line and trim it across the bottom or from one end of the object to the other. Okay, and so that line was not exactly on the bottom there. We could make it exact. How do we do that? We use the coincidence. So we pick coincident, we pick this point, we pick that point and we make them coincident. And we can do, and we don't really need to do it here because it's exactly the correct distance. But you can see how that line lines up much better. And so you can tell when things aren't working right, just kind of use that as a guide. Let's go ahead and trim this up now. So we'll trim the outside edges, we'll trim the top of the arc. Hmm. And so that top of the arc actually cleans this pretty well up because it's tangent right here. So there is probably a little bit of an overlap, but we're going to leave it as is. And uh, let's see here. I don't think I can trim the inside of this to make it a... Yeah, so we're not going to worry about that. And so we'll hit the home button and we'll finish the sketch. So we've got the shape here and we've got the outside shape that we're going to work with which is this. Now we're going to do the same shape but we're going to do it three inches in the other direction. So we're going to go ahead and grab the construction plane again. This time we're going to pick the XY but this time we're going to move it the opposite direction so negative 3.0. And again we're going to go ahead and put the sketch on that work surface and hit the front view. But this time instead of drawing everything we're just going to use the projection tool. So we're going to project our entities. So we're going to project the arc, the circle, and the line. So those three items are selected and we're going to choose OK to project them. And so now when we look we have the same object projected in the front and the back. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's finish the sketch and now that we have got three objects on three different sketch surfaces at three different Z distances, we're going to go ahead and create a loft. And what the loft allows us to do is to take the shape of the object, in this case it's going to be the outside shape, to the shape number two, to the shape number three, and it says profiles have multiple loop edges. All right, so my fear of having uh, that circle and that line touch is playing out. So let's go back to our sketches, and we can see that we've got sketch one, sketch two, and sketch three. So we're going to double click on sketch number two, and we're going to fix this. How do we fix it? We're going to draw a line below the object and trim the circle. So now we've got a clean surface. And finish the sketch. And we're going to do the same thing on the other sketch. 
So we'll double click on sketch number three and we're going to project the new line. Notice that that new line was not highlighted like the other ones, showing me that that is the entity that has not been projected. And now we're going to have to go over and take a look at this. And you can see that it updated the shape automatically because of what we projected. And we'll finish the sketch. We'll try it again. Create loft. We'll pick the shape, pick the shape, and pick the shape. So you can see what it did is it created a canoe. Okay, so it took the circles and connected the circles to the original middle shape that has a flat bottom in the middle. Now we can clean up the ends by adding another plane out here. And it's actually pretty simple. We'll do it really quick. So we're going to grab a construction plane from here, drag it out. Uh, let's just do it, uh, we'll do it one inch, put a sketch on it, and we'll look at the back edge here because that's what we're looking at. We'll draw a little rectangle. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle and we're going to draw it up high here. And finish the sketch and you can see that the little rectangle is a little bit out there. And so now I'll do the same loft process. So we'll create a loft, and you can see what it does is it basically creates the shape and tells it we need to connect it to another shape. Now again, this canoe is not 100% perfect. It's not, you know, it's kind of like a kayaking kind of looking canoe. Not as flat bot bottomed as it needs to be, but you get the idea of how the loft works. We create new planes, we create shapes, and the loft allows us to connect those shapes together. Many times it's used to go from a square to a round fitting, uh, especially in the mechanical design environment. Air ducts are the one that auto automatically comes up to that. Same with some of the uh, plastic piping uh, connection fixtures. Uh, those are also lofted. But there you have it. It's a simple process of creating a loft. Have a great day. Bye now.